Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of God. And um, it's difficult to stand up when you lose your mother. But it is not just possible, but it is an honor to stand up and say there's a God that lives. And tonight I know standing in front of you, there's a joy in my heart unspeakable. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's joy. Amen. And I can tell you this. Identity. Your identity must be in Christ, not in this world. Because the joy that I have, this world didn't give it to me. Amen. You know, you can take everything away from me, Lydia. But once you give me the Holy Spirit, I'm the happiest man. Because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He comforts you. And He lifts you up. He gives you the strength. The, the Bible says, He waits upon the Lord. His strength shall be renewed. And I can tell you, standing in front of you, my strength has been renewed. I want to say this. Can we just drop the volume of the, church, of the piano a bit? Because um, I don't want to shout at people. Then they say, I'm going to pop an R, even though my blood pressure is like, <laughs> amen. Is it better? Amen. Can we just invite everybody on social media and say, welcome at Identity. <laughs> the better place is to be in the house, and uh, we've almost got a full house tonight. Amen. Can we give Jesus a praise for that? Amen. <laughs> you see, there's a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. It is a kingdom that is not made by hands of this world. Therefore, you will see many churches will close and many churches will open. And we cannot get away from it because it is happening from ages to ages, from generation to generation. You see, the difference is that a church like identity is not a kingdom on a man-made kingdom. It's built on a kingdom. It is partaking of a kingdom. Now, I know you preach the message on the kingdom. But I'm preaching a message on a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Okay. <laughs> so, this is just a, a, it's not a better sermon. It's not a better preaching. It's not anything better than what you have given, Pastor Chris. But what it is, is a revelation for people to understand the kingdom. Because what you were doing in your sermon about the kingdom, speaking about the kingdom, is for people to understand that it is within our own right to have a kingdom. But I want to say this, I don't want to build a kingdom called Sydney's Avenant's kingdom. I don't want to build a kingdom in any way to say that identity is a kingdom. What I want to say tonight is, is that identity is part of a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Because this kingdom that I'm talking about cannot fail. And the devil cannot stop it. No evil plan can bring the kingdom of God to its knees. But the word of God says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to this kingdom. When the word of God is preached, there are many things that takes place. Let me explain this. When I preach the gospel, what it does is, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. So what am I preaching here tonight, Johan, is a message of the kingdom. The kingdom that cannot be destroyed, and your faith needs to be stirred up tonight, not by the way I preach and the way I move. No, no, it's good. No, no. The word of God must transform your heart. Because the power is not in the mic. The power is not in the music. The power is not of the sound. The power is in the kingdom of God. The power is the word of God. The power is Jesus Christ. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And when we preach the word of God, when we preach the kingdom, the false kingdoms are exposed. Okay, let, let, me, let me explain that. There are many years in ministry that I have seen how people came against my ministry. And if I talk about my ministry, I'm not talking about my church. This church belongs to God. But because I'm standing in a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, 
it makes all the difference because the truth is preached and the lies will be exposed the truth preached has the power to set people free from deception so all we have to do is preach the kingdom all we have to do is preach sound doctrine all we have to do is establish our faith in the word of god so that god can demonstrate his power his kingdom in and through our lives because you can fool some of the people some of the time but you can't fool all the people all the time so i am not in the business to fool anybody i'm in the business of the kingdom that cannot fail i'm in the business of a kingdom that can set people free i'm in the business of souls hmm. The word then has a way to establish order back into your life if it's preached to you. Say the lies that I've been believing must be exposed. You see, many lies are being told about the kingdom of God. But when we preach the true word of God, the kingdom of God that becomes a living environment say to somebody next to you i am not from this world i'm only passing through it you see you are a spirit that has a soul that lives in this body which means that you are on this world you're on temporary you've been linked to people i have an open gap in my life i'm almost turning 40 but i still look 20. but you know the thing is <laughs> My friend was gelukkig, yo, nak sê jou. Uh, <laughs> the reality is, church, nou sien ek die jong dame skit net in die kop, is die is. Um, was na, nee, Charlene, ek weet nie hoe oud leid Michael nie, how old does Michael look? <laughs> 75, as I like it, it's okay. <laughs> There's something about the kingdom, um, hoe oud is jou man? Hoeveel? 22? Uh, uh, he doesn't understand Afrikaans. How old does he, how, how old does he look? Maybe what? 25. It's the snor, ne? Is die... <laughs> ja, ek sê jou. <laughs> I'll not ask him how old you are, so I'll just leave it. But <laughs> there's something about the kingdom of God. It gives you anointing, and the anointing makes you look young. Okay. You see, when we preach the kingdom of God, we need to understand the word that became living upon this earth is Jesus Christ. And then the kingdom of God was demonstrated because Jesus said this, he says, behold, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. So when Jesus came to the plate, came to the, to the places where he walked upon this earth, when he started to preach, he said, behold, behold, the kingdom of God is near. Why was he saying it? Because there's a kingdom that can be established upon this kingdom, which we call earth. And in South Africa, it's a kingdom. Today we can see through our faith, whoever God calls for purpose and destiny and how the kingdom of Jesus Christ is being demonstrated through the power of God through them. Such as this church. You see, there is not a kingdom, Pastor Chris, called identity in heaven. Let me explain this to you, church. In heaven, they are not different kingdoms called identity, R-G-S, AFM, you know, PPCs, PPKs. They are not uh, 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 assemblies of the church or assemblies of Christ. They are not a Zion church. It is all the body of Christ. There's one kingdom. There's one throne. So you need to understand that there was the prophets of the old age that I want to take you to. And you need to understand is, is that these prophets have prophesied of a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. We have the privilege and the honor to live in a generation 
where we see the prophecies that has been prophesied have come to pass. It's the most exciting time to live in. And you mustn't look so serious because Jesus is part of your life. And you can live in that kingdom. Put on Daniel chapter number 7 verse 13 to 14. Now this is the prophet Daniel and it says, I was watching in the night visions and behold one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to an ancient of days and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory. Say dominion. Okay. Do you believe that dominion has been given to you? Before anything else was given to you. Right in the book of Genesis, God says, Let us make man according to our image and our likeness. And let them have... Okay, so remember that. So here the Bible says, Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. Say a kingdom. Because we are not talking about a church. Man-made church. We are talking about a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. That all peoples, nations, and languages should serve Him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. There's not one church that has lived 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 1,000 years ago that we know about now, except for the dominion that was given to Jesus Christ. There's a gospel and a kingdom that we know. 2,000 years later, there was a kingdom given that's an everlasting dominion. Which shall not pass away. Say it shall not. And His kingdom. Say the one. There's no other one. There's no other God. There are many gods, but He's the only God. There are many gods, but He's the only living God. I said it this morning. There are many graves, but there is one that is empty. And that is the grave of Jesus Christ. Because the one which shall not be destroyed. Now having that in mind, you need to see there are many kingdoms, but there's one. Say the one. The one that shall not be destroyed. No matter what kingdom rises up against it. You see the devil wanted to create his own kingdom. Why do we go through certain things even in churches? There are many people that says I don't want anything to do with churches. Because look at what's happening in churches. Brothers against brothers. Sisters against sisters. And they say, listen, this religion doesn't work for me because look how they fight between each other. Because it's all kingdom minded, the small kingdom with a small K. Because they are not thinking kingdom, the real kingdom, the right kingdom that we all should be concentrating on. I'm here to say to you, no matter what devil claims to be better, stronger or more superior, there's only one kingdom that says the word of God shall not be destroyed. And that is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Now, as a believer in identity, you need to catch this revelation. Just knock somebody next to you and say, hey, word wakker. Don't worry, the angels will not sleep in this church. Tell somebody next to you, oh, yes, an angel, you are an angel. So angels will not sleep. <laughs> oh. So it is important that as a believer in Christ, you need to catch this revelation. What the kingdom message is. And what authority it gives you. Because that authority gives you a supernatural power. It gives you a supernatural authority. It gives you supernatural access. At places where your mind cannot go. There are places that we cannot enter unless we are anointed. There are certain things that you cannot do unless God chooses you to do it. There are many people that want to do many things. But the Bible says few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. The reality is stay called until God chooses you. Do you get what I'm saying, Michael? The other very important thing is to know that there is a kingdom that has raised up against the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible says this kingdom, this one, which shall not be destroyed, 
meaning they had to be conflict. This is what the Bible speaks about, the good and the evil. You need to understand this. You, Mimi, where you are sitting now, over your life, the kingdom of light is fighting against the kingdom of darkness. Where you are sitting, Lillian, there's, there's forces of darkness fighting against your destiny and your purpose. Michael, Charlene, listen to me. Menelise, I will never forget your name. That's next me, many. Okay. Boss Aniki, there are at the moment forces fighting against kingdom. And this kingdom is not identity. You see, the, re the reality is because the kingdom of God is here and being established and demonstrated, this is why the devil fights it. Okay, let me explain this. So you get this. This is not coming up with excuses, but this is the truth that you need to be set free from tonight. A lot of times churches go through persecution and then the first thing people ask, what is wrong with that church? There's nothing wrong except that the kingdom of God is here. The supernatural power of God has been demonstrated here. And only time will show it. Now, <laughs> I want to say this again. Put on Daniel chapter number 7 verse 14. Read there. Then to him was given. Now the question we have to ask us, when did this happen? Do you guys agree with me? There's a fight against good and evil. There's kingdom against a kingdom. It's called the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And there's a kingdom that the Bible says cannot be destroyed. But what is that kingdom that comes up and when did it happen? The Bible says in Daniel 7, then to him. When did it happen? At that point in time, when God has given Jesus this specific kingdom where people and nations will serve him of different languages. So you get what we are a part of is the kingdom of God. You are not a part of identity. When you are part of this church and the kingdom of God is here, you are part of the kingdom of God. This is why success, Pastor Chris, without a successor is still failure. This is why I cannot stop with the vision God has given me to raise up sons and daughters. Even though sons and daughters has betrayed me, I cannot stop with the mandate God has given me. Because if I don't raise up other sons and daughters as successors, because if I die today, the kingdom of God cannot be destroyed. So this little kingdom called identity, we need successors to take over. We need a generation to stand up and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We cannot stop for what has happened. And we cannot change it. But what we damn hell can do tonight is say that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the kingdom of God. The word then means that there was a time chosen as the prophets have seen it. There is a time given so that you can understand that is the time when God said it is now time. Then God decided it's time to deal with the evil. When God says there, when, the, when Daniel saw that, then to him was given. God made a decision to say now is the time to deal with him. Remember, in, in, in the history books we will read, there was a time before Christ, and then there's a time after Christ. So before Christ, God did not yet decide, then to Him was given. Are you going to get excited? Because to Him was given dominion. So what does it mean to you and me? Then God said, now is the time to make known to humanity through the prophet Daniel, there is a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. So if we want to know specifically at what God meant by saying, then dominion was given to Jesus, what did he mean? Go for me to the book of Isaiah. Now this is another prophet. So now he doesn't just speak to the prophet Daniel, but he speaks to the prophet Isaiah. So who likes the Old Testament prophets? Are you, are you enjoying this? Are you learning something tonight? So here's something you need to get to. So now God speaks to a prophet, Isaiah, and Isaiah 14 verse 12 says, How you are fallen from heaven, 
O Lucifer. When did this happen? When God said, then dominion was given to Jesus. Okay, you need to catch this revelation. Because God already dealt with Lucifer, but some of us are still playing games with the devil. Okay. Say it's no more time to play with Lucifer. Because he's a son of the morning star. How you are out down to the ground. You were weakened. You who weakened the nations. Verse 13. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Now, if you go and look at that stars in the book of Revelation, it actually refers to, if you go and look in deeper Revelation, the stars, they refers to people. So what happened was, is that the devil said, I will rise my throne, meaning his kingdom even above people. Have you ever wondered why does God give the church so much authority, dominion and power? It is to show off that the devil has no power, that his kingdom has no authority. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. If you read it differently, my throne will be above the people of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. So what the devil said, I will place myself even above the church. On the farthest sides of the north. Next verse. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. And I will be like the most high. Meaning he was so arrogant saying that he will even be bigger than the kingdom of God. He was saying, listen, I'm going to show God who I am. Have you ever had people telling you, you're not going to make it. I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. I can more sing as you. And that's only because the toilet door was open. But when it's closed, you can hear who falls in Now the Bible says, yet when I say then to him was given dominion, yet you shall be brought down to the shell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Now this is where Satan lost the battle. This is where God said, Satan, you wanted to exalt and ascend your throne higher than the throne of God. You wanted to be above God's people. You wanted to be above the church. So if he talks about assemblies and churches, he, he, the congregation is the church of God. The devil had an attitude to say he will take everything for himself. The devil even said, listen, now you need to understand, he was the angel of music. He even said that I will take the praises of people for myself. That people will start to praise me. And I will establish a kingdom that will be better than your kingdom, God. That's why you will see most of the time people's attitudes... When they leave a church, they have a Luciferian spirit in them. They will have an attitude to say that I am better than that. But you see, sir, you don't understand that this church is not my kingdom. You are not speaking against my kingdom. What you are actually speaking about is the kingdom of God. And that is a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. There's a kingdom above every other kingdom. And when God says that you will be thrown down to this earth until I deal with you and put you into the lake of fire, Satan, you will be lower than the church. You will be lower than God's people. You will not speak to God's people the way you please. You will not rule the way you please. Because I will take then the dominion and give it to Jesus. So what the prophet Daniel saw was that there was a kingdom that shall not be destroyed. He saw that what the devil wanted is a seat in heaven above God. Say but. Say but. But you need to have an attitude. You see when the devil knocks on your door you need to have a but attitude. Now I'm not saying go him about. I say you have to have a but attitude. Okay. 
you have to have a but attitude. When the devil takes your finances, you say, but Jesus. When you lose your house, then you say, but Jesus. When you lose your car, you say, but Jesus. You see, the devil comes to steal, destroy, and kill. But Jesus came that I can have life and life in abundance. Because the devil is a liar. He's the father of all lies. But there's a kingdom that I can partake in. You see, this Jesus we are speaking about sits not anywhere but at the right hand of the Father. Where does Jesus sit? At the right hand of the Father, where the devil wanted to be and above. The devil was then dealt with when the Lord said, Devil, you shall not get this position higher above the church. This is where I get excited because now we need to understand what God said. There's a kingdom of darkness and there's a kingdom of light, Pastor Chris. And there's this kingdom that cannot be destroyed and that's the kingdom of Jesus Christ. But what does it mean for you and me, Manalise? What does it mean? Tonight we have new faces again in the church. Can we just welcome them? Four new people in the church. Come on. Come on, you can praise Jesus better than that. Yeah. And then somebody said, then this church will close its doors. Yes, sir, because we're going to open up a bigger church door. But you cannot fight the kingdom of God because it cannot be destroyed. You see, the devil was dealt with when God said, then dominion was given to Jesus. So what does it mean for you and me? Our identity should not be in Sydney, but in Jesus. Because my life will fall away. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all, as Pastor Chris preached upon the kingdom, I listen to your message. Don't think that you're a pastor, I don't listen to you. We all fall short of the glory. Even though I was mourning and I was heartbroken about my mother that has passed away, but I still listen to the message. Because you know why? Because when God appoints him for a time such as now, he is anointed to preach a message that needs to bring transformation. He is appointed to preach a message that will change your life. He is appointed and anointed for a time such as now so that your life can be transformed. By what? By the kingdom of God that the Bible speaks about. A kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Put on Ephesians chapter number 2 verse 4. What does it mean for you and me as a believer? If we say, Fricky, our identity is in Christ, what does it mean? What is this kingdom? But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Say he loved us. So first of all, why can we have this kingdom? It's not because of our good works and because jy kan psalm 23 op sê nie. No, no, no. Or you can say Psalms 23 just for my brother. It's not because you can quote scripture after scripture and you are this theologian and you the yellow Bible, you've eaten the whole Bible. No, no, it's got nothing to do with that. You can partake in this kingdom just through your faith. And how do you get it? Because faith was a gift. Love is a gift. Love is a gift of mercy. Now verse number five says, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. Say, I'm with Christ. Now you need to understand is, with means, it means it takes you from one location to another location. Okay, maybe you don't get that. Um, I want two people to demonstrate this. Marius, Fricky, come quickly. Fricky, stand up. So I want to say this. There's a kingdom above a kingdom. This kingdom here is our world, our kingdom. But there's a kingdom of God and there's an identity locked up in a Christ that has died for our sins. So what does it mean? It means when the Bible says, even when we were dead in sins, in this kingdom where Morris is now, but what the love and mercy of God has done on the cross of Calvary, Pastor Chris. 
it now has taken you out of this kingdom and he has taken you into the identity of Christ which now what happens is you are no longer alone what does the kingdom does it makes you not being alone You see, because when Jesus is enough for you, nothing else matters. You see, sin and death could take my mother. But the blood of Jesus has the power to give her eternal life. Which means she was part of this kingdom. But now she's part of that kingdom. Because now, the Bible says, by grace you are saved. And together with Christ, we cannot do it alone. So start off so you like more camera. Let's just carry on. Go to the next verse. And has raised us up together. So first of all, we are being put with him, and then we are raised with him, meaning that you were at a lower state, and now you become a higher state. You were at a lower kingdom, but now you are in a higher kingdom. You were powerless, but because you are in Him, you are now supernaturally empowered to do the impossible. So when you carry Jesus inside of you, they can come against you and take everything. But inside of you, there is a kingdom of Christ Jesus. There is a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. That's why I love what Paul says. Paul says, I do not live anymore, Fricky. Meaning you can attack my name. You can call me names. I know I must go for a haircut. My heart is longer. Yo. It's like, <laughs> you can call me spiky. You can call me, I don't care what you call me. But as long as you can see the kingdom of God inside of me, that is all that matters. That is all that matters, church. You see, because I want to be raised up together with Jesus. And then the Bible says, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, this makes me excited because now I am sitting in a kingdom that rules over the kingdom of the devil. Because the prophet saw Jesus coming and the prophet saw dominion was given to him. And in the beginning of the Bible, right there in Genesis, God says, let them have dominion. So all I want to do is tonight is let you be educated and catch this revelation, Armandu, that if you want that dominion, where do you need to get it? In Christ, that gives you the access to that kingdom. You cannot. That's when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can enter the kingdom. No one can enter and go to the Father except through me. This is why Jesus has the access to the kingdom that has all the resources, has all the answers. There's a heaven that has everything for you. Put on verse 8. For by grace you are saved. Say grace. grace. And through faith and not yourselves. It is what? When there's a gift, you don't have to pay for it. When there's a gift, Johan, you don't have to do anything for it. Because when your Father in heaven wants to give you the gift of the kingdom of God, you cannot buy your way into the kingdom. You cannot deal yourself into the kingdom. You cannot enter into the kingdom with your good works. It has been given to you by grace and grace alone. And we access it through faith. In our identity in Jesus Christ. So if you want to see how Jesus looked like this, Jesus is there. Have you casted out demons? Have you casted out demons? You see, the kingdom of God is inside of them. 
So when the kingdom of darkness comes in front of them, it is not them casting out the demons. It's the kingdom of God. It's Jesus Christ casting out the demons. You prayed for people and they got healed. Okay, so what happens? It's the kingdom of darkness coming against the kingdom of light. There's a name above every name and his name is? So when you speak Jesus, it overrules and overpowers the enemy's authority. Can we just give him a nice hand? Come on. <clears throat> Are you guys enjoying tonight? Yes. Uh, is anyone sleeping? Not yet. Okay, there's one, there's one. I see it seems to finger face. Okay. Was it a long it, it wasn't a long weekend, it was a long year, the last two days, you know. It's like in one day there's like six months, you know. Mm. You know, when you're tossing and you're turning. When you can't sleep at night, you need to be reminded that you can sleep in the kingdom of God. When the enemy fights you, get into the kingdom of God. Go to the next verse, verse number nine. It is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Don't let any man ever boast to you saying that I'm praying for you and now everything will be okay. Okay. Is it needed to be pray? Is it needed that people pray for each other? Absolutely. The Bible says that the vervent prayer of the righteous carries much power. But that's not the kingdom. That's why bad things can still happen to good people. You see, it's the kingdom of God that gives you refuge. It is the kingdom of God that gives you protection. It is the shadow of the Almighty. That is the place where you need to be, where you will hear no evil and see no evil. It is the place where the weapons may be formed, but it shall not prosper. But the problem is if you are outside of the kingdom of God, the enemy will give you the best rounds of your life. And it will take you out because when you are not in the will of God, you're in the permissible and then sometimes you're out of the will of God. So he will not take you for a ride. He will destroy you and he will want to kill you. But I thank God that there is a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. I want that words to, to lock in your ears and your mind and your eyes. That when you walk out this church, you can see nothing else but the kingdom of God that cannot be destroyed. No matter the lies the devil tell you. No matter what this governments tell you. No matter what this world tells you. There's a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. It is not for us to boast in it, says the word. For we are his workmanship. Created where? Remember, we need to be raised with him. Where? In Christ. We were created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. How should we walk? In dominion. How should we walk? In supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles. Because the Bible says, for he who believes, signs, miracles, and wonders will follow them. That's why I love my God so much because every time the enemy comes in like a floodgate I know he's raising up a standard but more than that when the devil attacks me like this I cannot wait how I see my God demonstrate his kingdom to give the devil a good round for his time and effort you have gone through challenges and battles in your life and I'm here to tell you all you have to do is shift your mindset we have have the faith tonight to say, I, I need to have the mind of Christ. Don't look at your situation through your own understanding. Because the Bible says His ways is higher. You know what I love about God? Herman? It's Herman, eh? Yes, I cannot say no more though, okay. It's not like Menelis, I forgot her name. She's forgiven me already, but it's, it's, it's okay. But, but here's the thing, Herman. Let me explain this. 
When God looks at you, He doesn't look at whether you are 22 or 25. He doesn't look how you look on the outside, but He looks on the inside. Because all He wants to do is to look into your heart and see if He can find Jesus. Because if He can find Jesus, you can find the kingdom of God. And when you can find the kingdom of God, you will find all the resources. Because He's the source. He's my healer. He's my provider. He's my deliverer. He is the one that will prosper me. He is the one that will shake this nation. I'm here to declare over your life that the kingdom of God is at hand and you can carry that kingdom. Don't let any devil tell you otherwise. And you know when you have the kingdom of God, it comes with the glory of God. Okay, let me explain that so you can understand it. All glory belongs to God, but we become partakers of His glory. When you carry the kingdom, the glory of God will come upon you. And then when people look at you, they won't just see the kingdom, but they will see the glory. This is why the Bible says God will take you from strength to strength, from glory to glory. We have been raised up in Christ whose kingdom cannot be destroyed. We are the head and not the tail identity. We are above and not below identity. There's a glory that shines through the evil kingdoms. And you know what? There's a prayer that Jesus prayed for you. Do you know that? Yeah, but not pastors. I pray with the community. Don't take the oomph out of it, man, Pastor Chris. It's like, <laughs> you're, you're on, it's like telling a joke and then you, you gooi the punchline. It's like, no, man. This is no joke. You're on him with bit Pastor Chris. That's like, <laughs> that's why I don't just give you the mic because you have for the punch at the day. It's like, it's like, <laughs> Oh, praise the Lord. Ferky, don't look so... There you go. Now you smile, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> There's a prayer that has been prayed by no man. There's a prayer that was prayed by Jesus himself, who has received the kingdom, the one kingdom that cannot be destroyed. And you know what was that prayer for humanity? That's so beautiful. Michael... What did Jesus pray for you and me? I'll take you in scripture what he's prayed. You want to, you know that Jesus prayed for you. When he walked upon this earth, even before you were formed in your mother's womb, he knew you. He had plans for your life. He had plans for you that there is purpose and destiny in your life. You see that man standing there, sitting at the back, not standing, right in the corner. Just raise your hand like this, sir. What? I know your name. What, just tell the people what's your name. I, I, I just lied. I, I don't remember your name. <laughs> no, I'm just joking, man. It's like, I'm just, Manalise, I just want her to feel better. It's like, <laughs> now, Zach knows me. I was so naughty that the police of Wolmeranstadt escort, escorted me out of that kingdom. Zak, is that the truth? Yes or no? The police said you will not enter into this little town ever again unless you grow up and stop your nonsense. I was the naughtiest boy in Volmaranstad. Johan, do you believe that? And today I stand in the kingdom of God. Preaching the gospel of Jesus. Because there's power in the blood to set the captives free. I can tell you, I can write books and people, do you believe the police escorted me as a young child out of Wolmeranstadt saying that I'm not allowed to go back to the town, brother? That's how naughty I was. But I love the blood of Jesus because he cleanses me. He removes my sins. He takes my past away. And tonight I can preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Because there's a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Now my, my daughters are sitting like this. Hey, Paul, what more? Yeah, it's like... <laughs> 
<laughs> my mom got a phone call. My, my biological dad phones and says, listen, your son is coming back home. She says, okay, what time will you be here? She says, he says, no, I don't know what time the police will be in Johannesburg, but make sure you get him at that police station. Johan, now that's your pastor. That's now your apostle preaching to you. That's why I tell my children, Yay, Kani, you cannot lie to me. I know every lie in the book. Because I was part, I'm an author in that book called Lies. <laughs> but I thank my Jesus that a kingdom was given to him that cannot be destroyed. And when that kingdom was given to him, that he had to pay with the blood that speaks on my behalf. So the message is not really a message from your message. You had your own message. It's a message that says there's a blood that speaks on our behalf. And there's a kingdom that cannot be destroyed that comes with it. And that kingdom had the ability to pray for us all as believers. And I want to end off with this scripture. Put on John chapter number 17 verse 20 to 26. Listen to this. This will rock your mind. It will rock your boat. It will take your, your, your faith into a different dimension. Because this is where Jesus prayed for you, Michael. Even before you were born, he knew that in the year 2023, Michael will sit in a church called Identity. That is part of the kingdom of God. And he needs to hear this message that I have prayed for him. What was that prayer? This is now Jesus praying unto the Father. He says, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Say their word. That's why we need to understand Romans 10 verse 9 to 10. That says, if they believe in their hearts and confess with their mouths, those who believe with their words, this is why we need to win souls for Christ so that they can have access to this kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Verse 21. Verse 21. Okay, but this one was slow. That was 21 day. Okay, but this TV is slow. That demon needs to get out of it. Go back to 21. Is it 21? That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me. Can, Stephen, can you put on the New King James Version because it reads easier. I want them to, in the simplicity of the Word of God, so that they can understand what Jesus had prayed for you. Because when we speak in the King James Version, thou, they, then it, 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 it sounds different. And then I don't want you to get confused, Michael. Charlene, I want you to understand in the most simplest manner how Jesus prayed for you. Just get it on for me. So what, as believers, we need to have is the revelation of the kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Are you ready? Now listen to this. That they all may be one. You see, it reads different, eh? So that you can understand. That they all, say that we, can be all one. As you, Father, are in me. So what does Jesus says? I'm praying unto the heavenly Father, Michael Herman. He says, listen, as I am standing on this, on this earth, on the same earth that you are walking on now. He prayed before he died on the cross of Calvary, Pastor Chris. Armando, he prayed and he said, let them all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world may believe that you've sent me. So how do we know that Jesus lived upon the earth? Because right in the book of Acts, when they received the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was given to the church that the devil wanted to have dominion over. 
Now, when we get baptized in the Spirit of God, we have a heavenly language. So that those, when we are in Him and He's in us, we speak a heavenly language. So what happens now? When we start to pray, the kingdom of God is activated. The kingdom of God is demonstrated through the power, through the authority and the dominion that Jesus has. So that the world may believe that you have sent me. To do what? To die on the cross. But listen to verse 22. And the glory which you gave me. So when people say this church is no longer about, Sid, about God, but it's now about Sydney. It is because they see the glory that Jesus, that was given to him, he's given it now to Sydney. Okay. I know there's silence. It's like. Whew. What I have, I couldn't buy. I just told you the police escorted me out of Wilmerenstadt with my clothes and everything. They didn't even give me time to put my bed on the van. They just said, you get, you get out of this place. But today I stand in the kingdom of God and Jesus says, listen, and the glory which you gave me, Father, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. Now, I'm not saying that I'm on the same level as Jesus. No, I'm saying I'm a partaker of His glory. I'm saying that when you look at me, you should not see me. You should see Jesus. When you look at me, you don't see identity. When you look in this church, you must see the kingdom of God be demonstrated. Mm. So that the world may believe that when Jesus lived upon this earth, the Father through the signs, wonders, and miracles, and the glory of God that shined upon Jesus, that the world may believe that He has been sent. Now, just for you who doesn't understand, an apostle in the original Hebrew and Greek language means the sent one. Uh, I don't know if you hear me, church. God has sent me, and I'm a partaker of His glory. I have the kingdom of God inside of me, and the devil is a liar. Hmm. Yeah, and then there's religious people. You see, dogs barks at churches that moves. God doesn't sit with the sitters, He moves with the movers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, maybe that you didn't like, but it's okay. Verse 23. I in them, and you in me. You see, I am not a perfect person. I'm imperfect. Johan, I've got a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes. I come short of the glory of God. But when the kingdom of God is inside of me, the Bible says that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and I have loved them as you have loved me. I thank God that my eyes have opened up, Pastor. Because in this church, we had a pastor that didn't love the sheep. That was not the kingdom. I thank God that he has taken his bags and left. And that the light, the kingdom of God has shined through the evil works. Because all of a sudden, we hear of how many people got hurt. Because of the way he treated people and now thank God that he's gone. And may God win and may God bless him. And may God win his soul. I pray that God shall pull him back into the kingdom. That he will preach the kingdom message. And that he will have the love. Listen, the kingdom of God is all about love. If you are in this church and you are not loved, then you have to question if the kingdom of God is here or not. Because he says, you have seen me and I have loved them as you have loved me. Verse 24. Father. Now, this is the most beautiful part, Michael. You see, Jesus is praying for you and me. Shanae, he's praying for us. Fricky, Marius, he's praying for us. Son, he's praying for you. 
This is the person, this is the 100% man and 100% God that has died on the cross for you and me. Zach, I remember your name. So, <laughs> Jesus prayed for you. <laughs> Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where? Remember this kingdom and this kingdom? So what is he praying? He says, I know I'm going to die on the cross. And you're going to give me a kingdom. Now I pray for humanity. Now I pray for every people that is going to be birthed and be born in the year 2023. Mm. To do what? So that they can be where I am. And that they may behold my glory. Says his glory. It's his glory. Not my glory. So the glory I have, it's not my glory. It's his glory. Which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. Which means God knew even before the foundation of the world. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, Johan. That you're going to be born in this year. Verse 25, listen to this. O oh, righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these I have known that you sent me. So what does Jesus say here? He says, I know, for, I know Pastor Chris because you've sent him to me. And I'm willing as Jesus to share my glory with you. In fact, I'm praying for you, Jesus, if he was standing in front of you, he would pray this. He would say, listen, I don't want you to sit in poverty. I don't want you to sit in your sickness. I don't want you to sit in your stress. I don't want you to sit in your depression. I don't want you to sit there and want to take your own life. I want you to come into my kingdom. I want you to come in my abundance. You are feeling alone. I want to bring you in a place where I'm in you and you and me and we are in the Father. And you are loved beyond money. You are loved beyond what you have. Oh, there's a Jesus that loves you. There's a Jesus that has a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. So we have this religious auntie on Facebook. She says, you have been preaching for one hour over the same thing. It's because you can't hear, man. That's why I keep on repeating the message. Maybe you need to hear. Doesn't matter what you say, you religious freak. There's a kingdom of God that lives in this church that cannot be destroyed. No, can you know religious means to work? Yeah. Verse 26. And I have declared to them your name. And will declare it that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. There's a kingdom that is full of love. We have been called into this kingdom by Jesus himself. So if you ask the question, Michael, what did Jesus pray for me and you? Is that we can be in the place where he is. If you have ever asked yourself, what is the purpose of my life upon this earth? Hello. He says he wants you to be where he is. That's your purpose. That's a destiny to be. He wants you to be with him. Okay. So what's the plan of God for your life? <laughs> 1 Peter 2 verse 9 to 10. And I'm ending with this scripture. Just read it for yourself and let's see if you get excited. Okay. Faith comes by hearing what? The word of God. So why are you on this earth? Jesus prayed that you will be with him where he is. This is why this church is called identity. Identity in what? In Jesus Christ. He wants you to take our, he wants you to take this time to realize, catch the revelation, to get out of this kingdom into his kingdom. Because the Bible says, but you are chosen, a chosen generation. 
He's not talking about the prophet Daniel and the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Ezekiel and the prophet uh, uh, Elijah and Elisa. He's not, he's not speaking about those prophets. He's speaking about this generation. He's not speaking about Apostle John and Apostle uh, Luke. Johan is speaking about Johan of today in this generation. You see, because you are a chosen generation, a royal priest and a holy nation. He's not talking about any other nation. He's speaking about this nation. So that we can praise Him. Because the Bible says, you have been called out of what? So when Jesus prayed for you, he called you out of the darkness, out of the kingdom of darkness into what? Called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, his kingdom. Verse number 10. Just for you who doesn't know it, 10 is the number of grace, double grace. It's got other things to it, but just for, for that you can understand. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Grace. How? Given as a gift to you. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Identity, I want you to stand to your feet and give Jesus a praise. I want you to glorify His name. I want you to lift this roof off and give God the glory and the honor. For there is a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. There is a kingdom called the kingdom of God. And it's of no other God. So who's excited to be part of that kingdom? Who's excited to see how God is going to operate in and through your life, through that kingdom? Who's excited to see how God is going to shift things into your bosom? Who is excited to see how it is shaken down, put into your bosom? I don't know if people are hear me tonight, Michael. The time for suffering is over. The time for overflow is here. I'm speaking prophetically that God's kingdom shall be established in your life. Mm. Are there any prayer requests online? Nothing. Praise God. Let's release the blessing of God. Just raise your hands to social media. Father, we thank you for every person that has joined in that they could hear this message that will transform their life. Father, we believe that through your stripes, people that are sick right now, they are healed. We call upon your healing power to over, overpower every illness and sickness and disease in their bodies. We stand on your word that says you've taken every iniquity upon your body. And I pray by the blood of Jesus Christ that they shall be forgiven of their sins, my God. That as they listen to this prayer tonight, that their lives shall be transformed like never before. I release your anointing to come upon them. I pray that your kingdom shall be established in and around their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> Amen. Come on, give Jesus a praise, church. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching. It has been great to have you with us. Remember to stay connected on all social media platforms. Go and check out our website www.identitychurch.cosa to partner with this ministry and together we can be the change.